First question for you, Larry. Uh, what was your most memorable accomplishment in the wrestling business? Well, you know, there's been a few, but the most memorable is the one that became the most historic. Uh, it became a classic in the time when it was unheard of. And, and that had to be the, uh, the match with Bruno San Martino in Shea Stadium. Uh, in those days, Madison Square Garden itself was too small. In fact, thousands of people were turned away from a, a place that held 44,000 people. So, uh, you know, not only was it uh, became historical because it was like the last of the old school era, but uh, you know, still today, uh, outside of the one WrestleMania in the Silver Dome where they drew 90,000, but people don't realize they gave 30,000 tickets away and had national television. I mean, what we pulled off in Shea Stadium was was and still is uh, remarkable. That, that's how good it was. What were your goals and dreams that you wanted to accomplish in the wrestling business? Did you accomplish your goals and dreams? You know, ironic as it is, I did. You know, when I was a kid and had my vision of becoming a professional wrestler, Bruno was my hero. And I wanted to grow up to be like Bruno. And uh, if you look uh, you know, past, uh, past history, uh, Larry Zabisco became, uh, you know, the heavyweight champion of the world with the AWA and has been known for the last 25 glorious years as the living legend. So I became exactly what I wanted to be, you know, Bruno. <laughs> okay, what, uh, where do you see the wrestling business five, five years from now? God, I wish I had a crystal ball. Five years from now, I'm going to be in Las Vegas surrounded by a bevy of beautiful deaf mutes. <laughs> but uh, the, the, the wrestling business, you know, you, you can't predict it because uh, it shouldn't, but it's, you know, it goes up and down. It was up and then it was down. In uh, the late uh, 90s, we had it uh, sizzling with the WCW, WWF wrestling wars. And, and, uh, and then uh, you know, with the demise of WCW, it got kind of stale and boring. And with the WWE's mentality, it got very boring. But now it's at a time when because it's been boring and, and people are dying for an alternative, TNA has a chance to start that curve back up again. And if the promoters are smart, and if the people are smart, five years down the road, it, it should be very, very big and very hot. How did backstage politics affect your career? Uh, not a whole lot. Uh, backstage politics ends if you draw money. Uh, promoters will hate you, but if you draw money, they'll book you. And because I had the, the politics on my side at the beginning of my career with Bruno you know, being his protege and, and being associated with him, and, and after the, the, the big feud we did in Shea Stadium, it was so big, I, I became a name because of that feud. And because I had a name, I, I didn't have to deal with the politics so much because I was a name. People would call, they knew what they got, they, they knew I was good, and uh, they knew I had the name. So I really didn't have to deal with too much of the politics. Plus, I'm not a political guy. And uh, so I, even if there was a couple of times I could have did you know, some politics, even with WCW, sometimes I kick myself in the butt because I could have went out of my way and, and uh, I don't know, bitched or complained or got on some people and you know, maybe had them do things different because I saw them going you know, the wrong way. But I was just so into the golf and the politics was such a pain in the butt between the big corporations that I really didn't want to have the time. I, mean, I didn't want to take the time. I had a family. I had to go off. I, I was living halfway ever after in Larry Land. But as a politics of me, I just don't play the game. So I never uh, really dealt with it. How has the internet affected pro wrestling, the pro wrestling industry in your opinion? What the hell is that? Is that your phone? <laughs> at least, at least I left my phone it. in my room. Yeah. We can ask that question again. Okay, I'll ask you again. How has the internet affected the pro wrestling industry, in your opinion? Well, to me, the internet uh, shouldn't affect it at all. Uh, the internet, to me, is, is just another form of the media, whether it's radio, whether it's television, or whether it's the internet. Uh, in terms of wrestling, it's a tool to use to reach the public. The only effect it seems to have sometimes is, is wrestling got in a bad 
a bad frame of mind for some reason that uh, the wrestling promoters or the powers to be whatever paid attention to what the people said on the internet and for a while there they were running the business as if they were appeasing the handful of people on the internet. You know, to me, the internet is nothing to use but to keep the people swerved. Can you tell us about the best rib you've pulled on another wrestler? And can you also tell us about the best rib that a wrestler pulled on you? Well, I'm going to make this question pretty boring. You know, I never really pulled ribs on the guys because some of the guys had a bad habit of getting the revenge rib. And I didn't want to deal with the ribs. To me, <laughs> some of them were cute, some of them were nonsense. Uh, you know, some were harmless, and, and, and some got uh, you know kind of ridiculous. So I never really ribbed anybody. The only thing I would do to some of the guys was I fly little planes. So I would fly from you know town, to, you know to town, and be back in an hour, and they'd be driving six hours each way. And so once in a while, some of the guys would crash. Hey, can we fly with you, man? So I, I, I take him and I, you know, I stall the plane or do something, you know, big dive in it and get him screaming a little <laughs> bit. But but that's about all I uh, I ever ribbed the boys. I was one of the guys. Most of the wrestlers are crazy. I mean, they're not normal people. I, I'm pretty normal. I came from a very normal upper middle class background. I enjoyed wrestling by being a part of it. But I watched the show kind of like a fan did. I just watched it from the back room. I, I watched all the insane nuts from a safe distance and uh, never really got involved in their games and their, you know, stuff like that. I, I, was, a, I was kind of a hermit. I disappeared to the casinos or the golf course. Most of the guys would just be in the bars. So I never really, uh, you know, had wrestling friends or too much in the business that way. Okay. Uh, we've got about two or three more questions and then we're done. we got, okay, where am I? What's your opinion of backyard wrestling? Well, if I got what it is right, backyard wrestling, is that where kids dive off their garage and hurt themselves? Mm -hmm. Yeah, set up their own ring in the backyard and perform in front of three or four people. Well, yeah, well, you know, it's a... I guess it's a form of flattery. I want to be a wrestler when I was a kid. I just didn't dive off my roof. I just wrestled in school and hunted down pros and weaseled my way in and, and did the wrestling. Uh, it's unfortunate to me because uh, these kids that are doing this have got the wrong idea of what wrestling is. And with some of the things, wrestling got very weird to me for a while when, I, when I'd hear that guys are falling through fluorescent light bulbs and bags of nails and chains. I mean, all this ridiculous nonsense. So to me, it was just like the kids that did this, you know, just either hypnotized by the power of TV or just weren't that swift. <laughs> uh, should pro wrestlers form a union? Why don't pro wrestlers form a union? I think? It's been talked about for years. Uh, it, it, it's just a situation where, where a business is compri you know, comprised of, of, of individuals. And because wrestling is such a wishy-washy business, you got a, a million guys want to do it, one guy will make it, and you never know for how long. So a, a union almost counteracts what the business works to anyway, because you know, to have a union and have guys come into territory and say, well, let's join a union, we're going to wrestle here for 15 years. It gets boring. That's why McMahon's business is so stale, because the, the same guys have been there for five years, eight years, 10 years. People want to see someone different wrestle someone different. So the longevity isn't long enough to, to, really, to really do a successful union, which is a good idea. But on the other hand, the promoters will squash it because you, know, you only got, right now you got Vince McMahon. He's not going to tolerate a union. You're going to come in there with a union, you'll be out in the street so fast that he'll give some other schmuck, you know, a hundred bucks to die to a table. So it's, it's just really not a business that's suited for it. Speaking of Vince McMahon, what is your opinion of Vince McMahon? Vince McMahon is a uh, promoter. You know, they will lie, cheat, steal, they'll uh, promise you the moon, they can cry at will. Uh, it's a necessity, you know, for the wrestling business. It's always been a double-edged sword between the promoter and the wrestler. And the wrestler needs the promoter, and the promoter needs the wrestler. 
You know, the only thing about Vince Jr. is he sometimes he's way too cocky and just he pretends he just don't need the wrestlers. But without wrestlers, there'd be no Vince McMahon Jr. So. And the last question. Do you have anything you want to say to the fans or other pro wrestlers out there who might watch this and watch this interview? Words of wisdom from the living legend? <laughs> well, in terms of all the wrestlers, always make sure you have a backup plan because uh, you know, a long career in wrestling is guaranteed to nobody. And to all the fans, uh, you people don't realize what power you have in getting what you want. You know, I, I would love to go on the national media and say, look at people, don't buy the WWE pay-per-view. Don't watch it. Don't buy it. Don't give them a dime. Until they get rid of the raunchy, nasty, stupid nonsense that you really don't want to see. You know, you, people will say, well, I guess it's the only thing in town we'll watch it. But then that just keeps them going. People will complain about it and say, oh, that's stupid. You people have the power to change it. TNA's going to change it. And if you don't like what you see, don't watch it. Don't get their pay-per-views and make them do a good product.